Hey guys, welcome back to Trendy Gadget. Today we'll talk about the Apple M2 chip. Let's head into it. What performance can we expect? If you haven't had the opportunity to use an M1-based MacBook, you've been missing out on what is undeniably Apple's best entry-level computer. We put the M1 MacBook Air through its paces for several months, and we were blown away. Single-core performance has been exceptional, it's lightning fast, and its multi-core performance has been impressive, especially considering Apple's claim that the M1 is an 8-core processor. The M1X is said to have a total of 12 cores. This will result in performance levels never seen before in a consumer-grade Apple computer. It will completely destabilize future performance expectations. The multi-core performance of the MacBook Air M1 is already impressive. With a score of 7,409 in the Geekbench database, more than 60% of Intel-based Macs, including the top-of-the-line 16-inch MacBook Pro, have this capability. The M1X, or M2, will add four additional performance cores, and the core frequency stays the same. We can estimate that the multi-core performance can reach just over 13,500. To put this into context, it's about the same as an 18-core iMac Pro, which used to cost upwards of $7,000. Granted, you don't always need a lot of cores, but if you use multi-threaded applications on a regular basis, you'll notice a difference. Additional cores will benefit these applications because they're designed to take advantage of parallel CPU threads. A single task is split into multiple smaller ones, and because there are more cores, there are more threads, allowing for more simultaneous processes to be executed at a faster rate. A soon-to-be-released M1X is probably another factor in Apple's decision to discontinue the iMac Pro. It discontinued it before it got totally embarrassed by a Mac $5,000 cheaper. If we take a look at the Geekbench 5 multi-core chart, only the 16-core, 24-core, and the 28-core Mac Pros would score higher. It is close to release. We are very sure that we will see a release of the new MacBook Pro M1X in July time. New redesigned Macs are almost certainly coming with M1X. For quite some time, the 14-inch MacBook Pro has been rumored. Mitchy Cool of TF International Securities had predicted that the 14-inch MacBook Pro would be available by the end of 2020, but he later changed his mind, claiming that Apple's plans had been pushed back into 2021 because the company wanted to use many LED displays in the new models and there were supply issues due to the coronavirus pandemic. Both analyst Michi Kuo and Bloomberg's Mark Gurman have stated that the 13-inch MacBook Pro will be completely redesigned. A Chinese ransomware group recently leaked several CAD files containing the design of the supposedly new MacBook Pro. On the right side of the machine, the schematics showed an HDMI port, a USB-C Thunderbolt port, and an SD card reader. Two additional USB-C Thunderbolt ports and a MagSafe charging port are found on the left side. For a total of three USB-C Thunderbolt ports, rather than the four that the upcoming M1X will have, this is in stark contrast to the current MacBook Pro, which only has two Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 ports due to the M1 chip. MacBook Air 2021 rumors have already begun surfacing, and welcome news, because while we love the recent MacBook Air with M1, there's still plenty of room for improvement. According to Apple Insider Mark Gurman of Bloomberg, the newly redesigned MacBook Air will either go on sale in the second half of 2021 or early 2022 at the latest. Gurman has a history of releasing deep Apple Intel, much of which often turns out to be true. Given that Apple added a new CPU to last year's model, Model. This year could be a perfect time to pair that new chip with an updated design. A recent leak from regular Apple tipster, John Prusser, has claimed that the MacBook Air 2021 will come in a brace of fresh colors, adding in blue, pink, orange, and green to the mix of silver, gray, and gold that the current MacBook Air has. If we're lucky, Apple might also use silicon for the larger, rumored 32-inch iMac, but details are sparse about that one as of now. It'll have a new, more efficient manufacturing process. Apple news channels and blogs believe that the MacBooks that will come out this summer will have an M1X chipset inside. Mass production of the M2, or M1X, is expected to begin in the second half of 2021. TSMC has not specified how different this N5P process will be on its website. When comparing the last generation 7 nanometer FinFET node, it does highlight how a standard N5 and N5P will differ. In the N5, 15% performance improvement, 30% reduction in power consumption, and the N5P has 20% performance improvement with 40% reduction in power consumption. As you can see, both the performance and the power efficiency categories see an uplift, but naturally, we'll wait for real-world numbers to come through to provide a more comprehensive comparison. More and faster RAM The M1 is available in either 8GB or 16GB of RAM. We found that the 8GB version outperforms a comparable Intel-based Mac, but the higher-end Macs will be expected to perform demanding tasks that require a lot of memory. I doubt Apple will try to match these machines' top RAM specs but 16GB and 32GB versions of the next Apple Silicon chip are essentially a given. What's even more intriguing is how Apple could boost memory bandwidth. The M1 increased the A14 64-bit memory bus to 128-bit. This means it can deliver around 68GB per second.
second when using LPDDR4X that's excellent for an ultra-thin laptop and it even outperforms the 27-inch Mac. But those Radeon graphics chips have dedicated graphics memory with bandwidth exceeding 100 gigabytes per second. Although Apple's graphics processors are extremely bandwidth efficient, I believe a 16-core GPU would quickly become bottlenecked due to memory bandwidth constraints, especially if it had to share memory with all those CPU cores. It is certainly possible to increase the memory interface to 256 bits, which would allow the chip to fly. This is something we'll need to listen out for more over the next few months what Apple plan to do about graphics on the M1X. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it, hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.